What is up boys and girls, it's Seb here with Modify Up. Now today I wanna to talk to you about something that we all go through at one point or another. Keeping up motivation on your project car can be really hard sometimes and it feels like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But fear not, I'm gonna share with you my tips for finishing off those projects. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and roll a clip of me changing some turbo gaskets because nobody wants to see my face for the next 10 minutes. Countless times we see project cars posted up online because the original owner has lost motivation to see the damn thing through. This is a travesty and it breaks my heart to see these half-cooked cars around the place. We've all been there. It's so exciting to start a new project and I'm sure you've got all the plans in the world for it. But at some point, you're going to look at that thing and be like, yeah, nah, I'd rather go inside and play a set of Corsa. This, my friends, is the beginning of the end of that project car. Sure, we all have our days off, but when this becomes a norm and working on the car is the exception, then we have a problem. Now, maybe you chose the wrong project to begin with, and your delusions of grandeur outweigh your common sense. Or, maybe you're just a lazy ass and making excuses. Oh, I'm waiting for this part. I can't do that till I do this. Stop it. Just stop. Now, if you want to tell your friends at the Christmas party the same story you told them last Christmas, then stop the tape, go find a jar, and cry your gypsy tears in there because nobody wants to hear the same story year after year. I oh, said, you just don't get it, do you? I've got a family and kids and a mortgage, and I've got no time. Well, keep watching. Try some of these tips, and you'll be amazed at how much you can get done in a small period of time. In no particular order, let's go through these five points so you don't find yourself in the trough of sorrow. Number one, your workspace. Now, not everyone is lucky enough to have a purpose-built garage to tinker away on their projects, but there are a few simple things here that will keep you going. Make sure you're comfortable. The more comfortable you are, the more likely you are you're gonna keep working on the car. Whether that means putting down a carpet or a yoga mat on the ground so you're not lying on that freezing ass concrete, or simply putting a table in front of your car so you're not bending over to pick up your tools off the ground. Work smarter, not harder here. And be comfortable while you're doing it. You want to enjoy working on the car, not dreading working on it. Put some music on, treat yourself, but know that there's a double-edged sword to this because if you're too comfortable, you won't get any work done. Take, for example, in my garage, I got the plasma on the wall, I got my gaming consoles underneath. This is a bad move, people, because all you want to do is sit your ass down and play games the whole time instead of working on the car. Sure, it's nice to have a sweet setup, but until you're able to train yourself to segregate the two and get into a productive working habit, then it's best just not to have the temptation there. So let's talk about cleanliness. Keep your work area clean, keep your tools clean, keep your car clean. I know it's the last thing you want to do when you just busted your ass to get that gearbox out, but it's so much nicer to keep working in a place that's clean. And you're not going to lose your tools. You're not going to step in grease. You're not going to drag dirt and junk around the house wherever you go because you've just stepped foot in the garage. Okay, number two, your tools. Now, there's a very fruiting French culinary term here that's mise en place or mise en place <laughs> sorry frenchies it's pronounced chowder what this means is everything in its place you're a car person otherwise you wouldn't be watching this so that means you've got tools for god's sake people organize yourself all right come check this out you need to keep yourself organized right sockets up here ratchets up here keep your spanners organized Keep your tools organized. Come on guys, it's not hard. The more organized you are, the more time you're gonna be spending on the car and not looking for that damn 10 mil socket. Take care of your stuff and organize it so that it's easy to access and you know where it is every time. This takes some discipline and some bigger jobs can leave your toolbox looking more depleted than an Iraqi stronghold, but having everything in the right place makes working on your car so much faster and easier. You can easily tell if something's missing. You don't know where that 10 mil is? Yeah, we've been through this already, haven't we? Okay, number three, planning. 
list, 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 and when you're done, list it again. Your list serves not only as your tracking sheet, but also as your target goals. Breaking down your tasks into clear, definable jobs gives you a direction. And if you group them together as related jobs, you can save yourself time by not having to double handle things because you didn't plan your tasks out. You're not going to put a dash in before you fit the heater core, are you? No. Alright, so we just get him in there like that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. If you want to spit on it, go ahead. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh. And there is our fire sleeve. Where you can, always list out your costs for the job. And this will help you plan ahead for all the parts that you need for a particular job and force you to plan where your money's gonna go. The biggest thing here is to complete one job before starting the next one. Don't get sidetracked. Don't start 15 different jobs at the same time. If you know the car's gotta be up on jack stands or up in the air, do everything underneath it. You know, just use your common sense here. Number four, minimize distractions. You're going to have to make some sacrifices here. If you're like me and lucky enough to be a parent, then you need to set aside time for your car. Your family should be your priority and your car comes second. So be a good person and set aside that for when the kids are asleep and when there's no distractions. This is going to help you. This is going to help your kids. This is going to help your wife. This is going to help your car. Number five, deadlines. Set yourself some realistic deadlines. Now I'm not saying set a deadline for the whole car to be finished where you're working on it for 20 hours of the day, only stopping to take a dump. No. Set yourself a deadline to have the engine out. You know, set yourself a deadline to have the engine bay strip. Set a deadline to have the body ready for paint. You know, realistic, measurable goals. This is what you're aiming for here. And really, you're your own worst enemy at this. Find the balance. Don't put pressure on yourself to do a half ass job. You should always use your whole ass when doing something worthwhile. And I know we said five at the start, but I'm throwing number six in here. Get over yourself. Sometimes it's hard to get your ass off the couch. Sometimes it's hard to go out into the cold or sweat it out in the heat, but you need to push yourself through times when you can't be bothered. Just get out there and do something little. That will lead into something more substantial. And next thing you know, you've punched out a whole chunk of that list. That's it, guys. Those are my tips for staying ahead of the trough of sorrow. Remember, this happens to everyone, and we all at some stage have had a shit box taking up space somewhere. The difference between a slap job and a good job is being willing to put in the time and effort. Nothing comes for free in this world, but if all else fails, lean on your friends and family for support. Get out into the scene and let other people's passions reignite yours. The biggest thing for me was seeing all my friends out on the track, while my golden nuggets sat there unused for five years. Don't be like me. Go ahead and finish what you started. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you were able to take away something from this. Uh, don't let those projects get the better of you. Like, just work through it. You'll be right. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and watching this video. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe drop me a like or even think about subscribing. Uh, I'm going to be heading out to the track in the next couple of weeks. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you ring the bell. And thanks for watching, guys. Okay, bye.